Hey everybody, Smart Silver Stacker here. Today I want to talk about preparing for 2023 and for everything that that year is looking like it might throw at us. And you might be wondering why I've got some lasagna and some chicken and rice out here. Don't worry, we'll be getting to that in just a minute. But first, I want to talk briefly about how 2022 has gone so far because we're approaching the end of the year and I think it's a good time to reflect back on some of the things that have happened in markets. Now, Sean Fu posted this image a couple days ago, and if you haven't checked out Sean's channel yet, I highly recommend after you finish this video, you go check out his YouTube channel. But this chart, I mean, it really kind of speaks for itself. This is the year-to-date performance of the S&P 500 versus gold and Bitcoin. You can see here that at least this year, gold has been the better store of value, and that's what we buy gold for. You know, we don't buy gold to get massive gains. And we're gonna talk about some ways you can actually get some leverage to gold and maybe put in some big gains when the price rises later in this video. But the physical, tangible metal itself, you know, this stuff is a store of value. It's designed to protect wealth. And that is exactly what gold has done. Now, I created my own chart and I added silver and the GDX because I wanna illustrate something here. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that that image that was posted by Sean was generated a few days ago, and since then we've had a bit of a correction in gold and silver, so their numbers aren't looking quite as good year-to-date as they were when that previous one was generated. They're still doing better than the S&P 500 and a lot better than Bitcoin, you know, by a long shot year-to-date. Silver here, you'll notice it is lagging gold a little bit, and that's kind of what you would expect. When the metals prices are under some pressure, silver tends to underperform gold slightly, and the flip side is also true when metals start catching a bid and you get a big bull market, silver tends to be the metal that moves up a bit faster than gold. And that usually happens towards the end of a bull market. So, you know, that's part of why I think silver today is such an opportunity. And another thing you'll notice here is the GDX, that's a gold miner ETF. It has trailed the gains that we've seen in gold and silver over the past couple of months since gold and silver came off of the lows and started to move up. The gold miners, they have gained, but they have lagged a bit. And I think that this is a huge opportunity that stackers, you know, we like to have our hands on some physical metal, but if you're very bullish on gold and silver, you should also be taking a look at some of these miners. I mean, just take a look at the chart for Newmont Gold here. Now, they're the world's largest gold mining company. And just full disclosure, I do own shares of Newmont. This isn't a paid advertisement or anything for them. It's just uh, me making some observations about the value of their stock. But you can see here on April 18th of 2022, this stock was at $85.42. And on that day, gold's high price was $1,997. And today, that stock price has fallen all the way to $47.03. But gold has only fallen to $1,779. That's where the gold price is right now. So you can see that these gold mining stocks have been disproportionately beaten up and they still represent a tremendous value. And I think that when gold and silver really start to take off, and I, I do think that the new bull market has begun with the gains that we've seen over the past month, despite this uh, small correction that we're seeing over the past couple of days, and you know, I'm not telling you to buy Newmont Gold. I'm not telling you to go out and buy any stocks. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. So you know, always do your own due diligence. But I just think that stackers should be aware of the ridiculously low valuations in some of these miners. And also something to note is that Newmont they pay a 4.5% dividend. So. You know, this is a dividend paying stock that produces real hard assets. And in this kind of an environment, you know, this fits the bill for me. This is what I'm looking for. So even if the price of gold and silver goes sideways, this is a stock that's going to pay you a regular dividend. And me personally, what I do with that is I just reinvest it into buying more shares. Now, I do want to talk about preparing for 2023 here because uh, gold and silver, they've had kind of a rough year. But based on those charts, you know, there's a good chance that we're going to finish the year in the green with the metals. I really think that, uh, you know, depending on what happens over the next couple of weeks, probably depending on what the Fed does at the next FOMC meeting, there's a good chance that both gold and silver could end the year in positive territory. We're only a few percentage points away from that. I also want to cover some of the stories that are in the news today. So first of all, we've got this announcement from the SPA, that's the Saudi press agency, that 
President Xi Jinping of China is going to be traveling to Saudi Arabia this week. Now, he's going to be meeting with King Salman and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, or MBS, as he's also known. What they'll be discussing behind closed doors, we can only speculate about. Personally, I suspect that they will be talking about stabilizing global energy markets uh, amidst this G7 price cap and EU embargo that just went into effect. You know, they may also be discussing OPEC production cuts. Maybe they'll be talking about Saudi Arabia's bid to join the BRICS organization. Maybe they'll even be talking about pricing Saudi oil in yuan. But whatever they're talking about, very unlikely it is good for the petrodollar. And that is something that I think we really need to be looking out for in 2023 is this trend of de-dollarization and the threats to the petrodollar they are going to grow exponentially. I mean, first of all, this EU embargo and G7 price cap, it's unlikely that this is going to be the last scheme by the Western powers to wage economic warfare on Russia. I mean, the conflict between Ukraine and Russia is escalating. And I'm not trying to uh, pick sides here. I'm trying to be as objective as possible. But I think the important thing to focus on here is how this escalating conflict is going to affect us and our daily lives. And there's some real potential here for disruptions to global energy prices. And also, it's a tremendous threat to that petrodollar system I just mentioned. You know, the petrodollar is the system by which the Saudis agreed in the 1970s to price all of their oil exports in U.S. dollars, and they've stuck to that to today. But, you know, they've been cozying up to China. They're now China's biggest supplier of crude oil, sort of neck to neck with Russia for that role. China has become their biggest trading partner. You know, you've got the president, Xi Jinping, visiting over there. And, you know, they're shaking hands. They're not fist bumping like our president. And also, you know, Xi Jinping isn't chastising the Saudi leadership for the OPEC production cuts. So Chinese-Saudi relations are on the uptick and U.S.-Saudi relations are in the pits. And that's been a trend for 2022 that I think is going to continue in 2023. Now, another story that caught my eye was this North Carolina power outage that happened over the weekend. So two power substations were damaged this weekend by gunfire. It left 45,000 people without power. And it's being described by the sheriff as a deliberate attack. He said that the attackers knew exactly what they were doing, and now the FBI is investigating. Now, some of the power has been restored at this point, I think there's still about 38,000 people without power, so it's not an insignificant event by any means. And the fact that this happened in a coordinated fashion among two power substations is very significant. Now, you know, who did this? Who's behind it? No word on that yet that I've seen. Maybe it was just some local nut job, maybe some kids being really stupid. But more likely, the fact that this was a deliberate attack, and, you know, it looks like it was very targeted and it had the intention of disrupting the grid... There's also the possibility that this was, you know, maybe some kind of a sleeper cell from some other country. I mean, I'm not going to speculate too much about that. A few countries do kind of come to mind who it might be in their interest to have a plan to disrupt the U.S. power grid. But the point is that the grid is vulnerable. And you've got to ask yourself when you see news like this, how prepared are you for some kind of a prolonged grid down situation? You know, do you have a way to stay warm? Do you have a backup source of power? Do you have a way to cook? Do you have a way to, uh, you know, prepare food without electricity? Do you have food that doesn't require refrigeration? And that's where preps like this kind of come into play. So what you're looking at here is some of my Black Friday purchases from this year. I didn't buy any electronic gadgets or uh, doodads or high-tech toys or you know, any of that stuff that you typically think about on Black Friday. But what I did pick up was a couple extra cans of Mountain House freeze-dried food. I'm just kind of steadily accumulating those. I, mean, I have a lot of rice and beans, I can tell you, stocked up, so I'm not too worried about calories. But stuff like this will give you, you know, something a lot more appealing, a lot more pleasant to eat than just rice and beans. It's also very easy to prepare. You know, you just add hot water to this stuff, and it tastes really good. This stuff lasts for about 25 to 30 years in a can like this, as long as you store it properly. Having an emergency food supply can give you a lot of peace of mind when you're seeing events like that take place. I mean, just think about it, 38,000 people out of power, that's a lot of individuals. And one of the scary things about the grid is that, you know, in order to take down the entire grid, now I'm not a grid engineer, it's extremely complicated how this stuff works, but my understanding of it is 
that if you disrupt enough of these power substations, like not a huge percentage of them, it can lead to things like cascading grid failures. So, you know, if somebody, some nefarious force out there is targeting the grid, this is something we should pay attention to and get prepared for. I mean, we don't know who's behind this, but it was a person, it was an entity, it wasn't an act of God or of nature or anything like that. It was a deliberate attack. And so, you know, we might see more and more of this as time goes on and as the geopolitical situation continues to devolve around the world. Now, another thing I picked up this Black Friday was some gold because, uh, you know, gold is hard, tangible money. And whether you get a grid down situation where you can't access the bank, you can't access ATMs, I mean, in that situation, maybe first couple days, cash is going to be a lot more helpful and in a very limited scope event like what we have in North Carolina where it's only 38,000 people. You know, it's not millions of people without power. Uh, cash is probably going to be king. But in a prolonged grid down event where cash is no longer accessible or perhaps people don't trust it, gold is widely recognized as a hard, tangible asset. So, you know, whether you're stacking gold for wealth preservation or as an inflation hedge, one nice thing about having some gold is that it is pretty much universally recognized as value. And so in some kind of a grid down situation, there's a role for hard assets like that. And I picked this up on Black Friday from SD Bullion. Now, SD Bullion also happens to be today's video sponsor, and they had that great deal where this was available at Spot for Black Friday, and now the Black Friday deals and the Cyber Week deals are over, but they have some amazing regular deals going on right now, so I always recommend uh, if you're looking to add some physical gold or silver to your stack, definitely check out SD Bullion and check out that deal section. That is where I usually shop with them because I'm not too much into the collectibles and stuff like that. I am much more into just getting a lot of weight for my money with my silver bullion. Now, Speaking of stacking silver bullion and getting weight for your money and all that, you don't always have to get a 100 ounce silver bar. You know, if you're out there and you're watching this video, maybe you haven't started stacking yet, you haven't started preparing yet, you don't necessarily want to go out and pick something like this up. And, you know, a 100 ounce bar is great if you're just looking to get the most silver for your money. But if you only have a couple bucks or you just want something small, a great thing to always add to your stack is silver dimes. Now, right now, the premiums on junk silver, I think they're about 35% last I looked over spot. So it's not a small premium by any means, but if you're going to get fractional silver, you're probably going to pay a high premium anyway. So if you're in the market for small amounts of silver, you can't do better than a silver dime if you ask me. And it only takes a couple dollars to buy one of these. I mean, even with silver prices on the move up, even with premiums high, you can still get one of these very inexpensively. Like if you skip a coffee, you're going to be able to buy a silver dime. And for that, you know, if you're just getting started with these, find a good local coin shop around you. I bought a lot of my junk silver at my local coin shops. Now, I don't have any of those around me now where I live, but I used to live somewhere else where there was a lot of local coin shops. And that was one of the things I would buy when I first started stacking is I would just go into the coin shop. And even if I only had a couple bucks, you know, maybe I had $10, $20 in my pocket, I would buy as many silver dimes as I could. And I think it's an excellent way to get started stacking. And also, you know, if you are looking for something to trade with or barter with after a grid down scenario or in some kind of SHTF scenario, you'd be hard pressed to find something better suited to that purpose than a silver dime. I mean, this stuff was the circulating currency in the United States for many, many decades. And silver coinage for more than a century was the, you know, primary means for the average person to transact in this country. And who knows, uh, we may see that come again. Now that's certainly not guaranteed, but I will tell you what, having some silver dimes definitely does give you a feeling of security. Like no matter what happens with money or the dollar or the grid, you're always gonna have some tangible hard money and a nice, easily transactional denomination. So let me know what you are doing to get prepared for 2023. I mean, it's gonna be a year of supply chain disruptions. It's going to be a year of continued inflation, probably going to be a year where we get a nasty recession. And so there's certainly more reasons now than ever to be getting prepared. And I always like to hear from all of you and get your insight into what you're doing. So let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll catch you next time. Stay safe and happy stacking. Smart Silver Stacker.